In this video, we're exploring the high prairie in southern Saskatchewan and the Jeep Rubicon. We're going to try and find a great spot for a late autumn overnight camp. We're going to be testing out the iCamper SkyCamp 3.0 and how it deals with colder temperatures, so stick around if you'd like to see more. Hi YouTube, welcome to the Important Outdoors. My name is Michael and today we're going to be camping in the iCamper SkyCamp 3.0. So we're currently out in Cypress Hills on the Saskatchewan side on the West Block. This is one of the rustic camping spots. So on this trip, I have my wife Toby and the two dogs. We're gonna be testing out how to keep the Sky Camper warm because my wife sleeps very cold. So we're gonna test out a few different ideas that I've had to keep the inside warmer. The first one I'll show you right away. So I did go out and pick up the insulated liner for the SkyCamp 3.0. And I haven't used it yet, haven't set it up. I have no idea how it goes in. So this is something we'll learn together. So first of all, I'll just explain what we have going on. So this is a 2021 Jeep Rubicon. This is the JLU. And I have the Rhino Racks uh, Pioneer platform mounted up here. This actually bolts through the roof of the Jeep. So it's uh, very, very strong. And the SkyCamper 3.0, actually clamps directly onto this very simple has four clamps and it fits perfectly on this rack and i'll probably make another video on how i did that but it's straightforward if you're looking to mount this tent to this jeep then this is a really good way to go but i'm going to go ahead and actually get it set up now So I intentionally left this part of the video in real time so you could see all my fumblings and mistakes and how quickly you can actually set this tent up. If I just really went for it, I could set it up in much faster time, but this is me on a nice sunny afternoon setting up a tent with no pressure. I think this is a more realistic setup time for the average person. The videos that I watched were the iCamper employees and they were setting them up on displays and they can get them done in like 60 seconds. But in the real world, this is more typical, I would think. I'm taking a little more time here just to set up the ladder to exactly the right height. That's really important because the ladder supports this side of the tent that flaps out and make sure that there's no stress on that hinge. Contained in a special pocket at the front of the tent are six specific rods. Two longer rods are for the front of the tent opening and the four other rods are for the two window awnings. The side window awnings are optional whether you want to actually put the stays in place. There are some strings inside that control the awnings as well, so you can actually pull them up like a Venetian blind. One of the very few things that I dislike about this tent is the way that the door rolls up and uses a simple loop and toggle. I would expect something more refined for a tent of this price, as it is very fiddly. So that's the tent effectively set up. There are the side pullouts that we can put on each side of the tent. There's one here obviously, one the other side, and the main entrance. The main entrance is the only one you have to put those stays to keep the uh, canopy pulled out. But that's effectively it. Let me show you inside. 
So to enter the tent, there's this built-in ladder, which is very straightforward. And hopefully you can see. So I actually keep a sleeping bag already up here. Uh, saves me having to pack it in the Jeep. So it is a two-piece mattress. That just covers the whole of the inside. There's enough room up here for four people. It's the exact same size as a king-size bed. And this back part is the, where the hard shell is and has this wonderful map of the world, which I really like. These are the two windows on the side and they can be either screened in for ventilation or you can have those side pieces put out. Both sides. And also at the top, there's an actual skylight to let light in and ventilation. Uh, the fabric itself is like a canvas type fabric and it looks like a uh, nylon type fly on the outside. Now the fly isn't needed all the time, this is only used for wet weather so you can actually pull that back and store it behind the, uh, the body of the tent uh, for warmer climates. But there's lots of room and as you can see it's very very simple to set up. So I've got a few more things to kind of throw up here and we're done. So I've also been testing out a few new items. This is my new water carrier that I picked up from Princess Auto. I think this is a 20 litre. I'm not sure this is going to be my final solution, but it was cheap. Uh, it's easy to pour. It's like a fuel can type of deal. And vent on the back. And these guys, which are a lifesaver for leveling up your vehicle, saves me a lot of messing around and they're not very expensive. So they store quite easily in there. And they stack together quite nicely. So yeah. Okay, so we got the tent all set up and we got the my sleeping bag, Toby's sleeping bag, and I'm going to show you what we have planned to see if we can keep the warmth in tonight. So it's probably going to go down to just either below freezing or just above freezing. So it's going to be on that on that point. So let's take a look at some of the items I brought with me to try and keep the tent nice and warm for Toby. So the first thing is I brought an electric heater. This is a 250 watt output heater. Uh, it runs off of 110 volt and it can be switched down to like half level, I think. It's got like high low. It's got an anti-tip button so it falls over. That, that'll work. So to power it, I've got the EcoFlow Delta. Uh, this is a bigger power supply and this will run this on full power probably all night, I think. Uh, I'll check the stats exactly, but this is a pretty big guy. I think it's like a thousand watt hours. Uh, so that'll, that'll do the job. So this is my plan to kind of warm up the ambient air. I also picked up a heating blanket, again from Amazon. So it has three heat settings. It's a nice soft blanket. Uh, it's machine washable. And it's a nice kind of fleecy plush type of deal with it and we're going to try that. This consumes about 100 watts so again my power supply will run this all night. I'm not sure if we'll need both or we'll kind of test it out. And the other one is obviously the liner. So this is what the liner looks like. It's a nice quilted kind of cover with clips and inside the bag thankfully these are the instructions so it just looks like it goes in. Number one, fold the insulation, clip the back, clip the front, connect the two S hooks. 
so I think we're going to go ahead and put the liner in. That's going to be a little bit difficult with the camera. So I guess I'll put this in and then I'll tell you how difficult or simple it was once it's in. So I have the liner all set up now. It was actually very easy to do. It's uh, just basically a series of clips along here and along the other side you can't see and just four clips in the corner and it goes in quite well. Uh, very easy, took me uh, probably five minutes to do because I've never done it before. Uh, there is a, a gap in the, or an opening in the liner so you can still use the skylight and you also get an opening. These are just a pull to one side, so it's a single zip and just a kind of curtain to one side for each of the, the windows on each side. And obviously with the main door, I've got this rolled up currently. Uh, so that covers as well. And then you just tuck the liner into around the, the outside, just kind of put the, the cushion on top of it and it's all done. Uh, the quality is excellent. Uh, it's going to make a, a big difference, I think, to uh, how warm this is going to be. Having that extra layer, as you can see, between the outer and actually we have two outers. So we have the nylon outer, the fly, the tent body, and now the liner. So there's actually three layers, which is going to create that dead air, which is going to be a great insulator. Uh, I do like the color. It does brighten up the inside for the darker evenings when it's going to get colder. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to stop any condensation, hopefully building up within the tent. It's going to keep that uh, nice and warm and allow it to actually pass through and exit without causing too much moisture problems. So that's the plan anyway. I'll let you know how it works out. We should go down to maybe slightly below or above freezing tonight. And we're going to try some of the other methods as well that we mentioned. So we've got the liner in. Uh, I believe it does collapse as well with the liner intact. I think you do have to unclip part of it, but then you can just fold the tent in as normal anyway. So I'll also test that and make sure that claim is true. So for now, I think we're all set. This is one of the park's rustic camp spots and it's very small. I think it has about 16 pitches and it's just by a really nice river. It has bathroom facilities and free wood. And we were the only campers there that evening, so we had the whole place to ourselves. So we're kind of settling into it and yeah, this is warm. So Toby still has the electric blanket switched on, but I haven't bothered with the heater. I don't want to overheat the dogs, but it's at least a comfortable 15 plus maybe. And that's with just two people and two dogs. And it's probably about four degrees Celsius outside. Yeah, everything just feels warm. Yeah, it's surprising.
Well, good morning, everyone. We survived the night. It was actually very, very comfortable. Uh, temperature went down to about minus three, somewhere in that range. And we were very nice and warm inside the eye camper. Even my wife, Toby, was warm. So I think it was a combination of the liner, which definitely made a difference. And she also had the heated blanket. So that worked out really well, and it didn't actually take that much power. I just put on the little air blower heater this morning, just to warm up the inside, uh, just to make it a bit easier for her to get up. But yeah, it worked out really well. And what a stunning morning we woke up to. So this is the lantern that I was using last night. This is the Claymore lantern. Kind of a retro styling. Um, but I, I really like the way it looks. It has this removable kind of uh, diffuser type top. You can charge it at the back with USB and you can also output from it as well to charge your phone. It has four lighting modes, uh, which I forget the names of, but I'll put on the screen somewhere and you can obviously change the intensity of each one and just pure white that worked really well, it can last up to 55 hours uh, so it's going to last a long time in your camping trip but yeah might do a review separately of this just to give you an idea. It is an expensive lantern. I think it's about $150. Uh, I picked this up from a company called Big Tent Outdoors. And I'll put their details below. But yeah, this is definitely a quality item. So I'm going to get stuck into my breakfast and then I think we're going to probably pack up. Uh, there's a couple of places we want to visit on the way back. Uh, so there's a couple of trails I want to take a look at. So I'll be back with you very shortly. So this is a picture of the liner just folded up against the back of the canopy. However, I did end up dropping the whole thing flat and just leaving the back two clips connected. After removing some of the equipment from inside the tent, it was time to pack up. You can leave a couple of sleeping bags up there if they're very compressible, like down, but anything bulky really causes the roof so it doesn't want to really clip in too easy.
on the Saskatchewan as well as the Alberta side of the park. There are lots of historical sites to visit and lots of history, especially Fort Walsh if you ever get the opportunity to visit. Unfortunately, no wild camping is permitted within the park boundaries but there are these rustic campsites that are dotted around the trails. There is a small fee for each night's camping and at our campsite it was $18, which I thought was reasonable. Well sadly we've come to the end of the video, I hope you've enjoyed our little trip away testing out some of the ways that we can stay warm in the iCamper. I think the liner with the electric blanket is the winning ticket and it seems to work really well. I would certainly feel comfortable using that solution until probably just below minus 10 or in old money that would be 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you have any questions about the iCamper or the trip please leave me a comment below and until next time take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.